Today, I'm going to show you how to make a tool holstering system for your game. There will be a model of what I show in this video in the important link section of the description, which also has written instructions if it's easier for you. If anything shown in the video changes or does not work by the time you are watching this tutorial, please use the model from the description because I will update it to make sure that everything works properly. If you end up using the model and find it useful, consider leaving a like on the video, and if you have any feedback, let me know by posting a comment so I can continue making those better and easier for you to use in the future. During the video, we'll be creating everything from scratch, so first make sure you have the Explorer and Properties enabled from the View tab at the top left of the screen. In this section of the video, we're only going to be adding in some tools, creating accessory versions of it, and connecting it to the character via attachments, so if you already know how to do that, you can skip to the timestamp on screen to go to the part where we start writing the scripts. From here, the first thing we need to do is add a character model into the game so we know exactly where the accessory will go. In order to do this, go to the Home tab at the top left of the screen and click on Play. Once you've spawned in, you can go over and open up the workspace, select your character, and then you could right-click it and click on Copy. Once you've done this, you can click Stop at the top and go back to the workspace and paste your character inside. Next, we can add some tools into our game. One way that you're able to do this is by going over to the toolbox and clicking on the picnic basket at the left side, or the marketplace, and then we can search for any model. To make sure we're only adding in legitimate models into our game, I'm going to click the filter button at the right and type in Roblox so that we only see models published by the official Roblox account. And from here, I know that all of these are legitimate, so I can add in the sword, click on no so that it remains inside the workspace, and then we can add in one more tool. But let's say you wanted to add it in from the Roblox catalog. What you could do is go down to the Roblox website and go to the page of any item. From here, you can go to the web address bar and copy the number that appears inside of the link. Next, we can go back into Roblox Studio, and you can either type up this line of code into the command bar at the bottom of the screen, or you can copy and paste it from the important link section of the description. And the only thing you need to change is the number one right over here. You want to replace this with the number that you got from the Roblox website. And what this will do once we paste it into the command bar at the bottom of the screen and hit enter is it'll add it into the workspace inside of a model. So now we have the official hyper laser gun tool inside of our game. So now that we have both of these tools, we need to enable one more thing. And this will be the attachments of the character. In order to do this, we can click the model tab at the top left of the screen and click on constraint details. From here, a couple of dots should appear on the character. And if that doesn't show up, make sure the scale is set to something at one or higher. So in this case, I could even change it to two and you'll see that these dots appear larger. Additionally, some of these attachments will differ depending on if you're using an R15 or R6 character model. So as we can see here, the R15 character has attachments in the hands while the R6 character does not. Just because I'm more comfortable with R6 characters, I'm gonna duplicate this one and use it for aligning the tools. So now I can move this over here, and then I'll move the tools over here, and then we can continue. The first tool we're gonna to start with is the classic sword. So what I'm going to do is select it, you can right click it and click on duplicate, and then we're gonna move it over behind the character. This is the version of the tool that we are going to turn into an accessory. So what you want to do from here is open up the tool and remove anything inside that doesn't affect how the item looks. So for example, we can get rid of any scripts inside, we can get rid of the thumbnail camera, and now we're just left with the handle. Because if I were to remove this one, it's going to get rid of the tool entirely. If you have a tool with multiple parts inside, then you can keep them. Just make sure you don't have any scripts inside, and it should be completely fine. From here, we can now click the plus button next to the workspace and add an accessory inside. We can then transfer this handle over into the accessory and rename it to the exact same name as the tool, except with the word accessory attached to the end of it. So as we can see, now this handle is inside of the accessory. It's called Classic Sword Accessory with the exact same capitalization and spelling as the name of the tool with the word accessory attached to the end of it. This will be the exact same for any other tool you change. So for example, the hyper laser gun, 
would turn into Hyper Laser Gun and then Accessory at the end. So now that we have that out of the way, we can start aligning this on the character and get to the final steps for this section. First, I'm going to adjust the orientation of this so it's easier to align. And in order to do that, I can select the handle and go down into its properties. I am then going to adjust its orientation property. So to make this easier, I'm just going to do negative 90, comma 90, comma 0. And now it is completely vertical, and that'll be much easier to align with the character. Next, we can select any of the attachments inside of the character. So in this case, I'm going to utilize the body back attachment inside of the torso. And now I'm going to right click this and click on copy. We then want to go over to the accessory and paste that attachment inside of the handle or whatever the centralized part of your tool is. So now we have the body back attachment directly inside of the handle. What we can then do is align this handle with the character wherever we, we would, wherever we would like to, and then we can rotate the attachment as needed. So for example, I can line this up with my character over here, and then I'm gonna start rotating the attachment. So now I'm going to select the body back attachment. I'm gonna move it forward just a little bit, and now I'm gonna start rotating it. Take note, actually I'll, I'll keep it a little bit further away just so it's a little bit easier to see. Now take note that this comes with a lot of trial and error, so it might be a bit difficult to find exactly how it needs to be, but I'll demonstrate how we can check to see what it would look like when given to the character in just a moment. So I'm gonna adjust this really quick, and now I think this will be good. So what I'm gonna do is move it closer to the handle, and now I'm going to select the handle and move it closer to the character, so now it's close to my character's torso. What we can then do is select the classic sword accessory. We can right click it and click on duplicate. This second version, we can now drag directly into the character and it will show us exactly how it'll be once they've equipped it. So now we can see that this is inside the character's back, so we still need to adjust it a little bit. The reason we created a second version of it is because if I were to undo this, you'll see that it doesn't remain in the same orientation that we left it in it ends up like this. But since this is a duplicated version of it, we could just get rid of it and adjust the one that we had right here. So for example, I could just move this back a little bit further, and then I could duplicate it and drag it back into my character, and I'll see that it still needs to be adjusted a little bit more. I'm actually gonna leave it right here. I'll do it right there, and then I'll move the handle a little bit. I think this is the final time I'll need to adjust it. And now once I duplicate this, drag it into the character, we'll see that it shows up on the back of the character. So now what I could do is look from a few different angles. We'll see it looks pretty good. And now we can move on to the next item. And I'll do this one off camera. So I'll just be showing the final steps of the process for this one, because all I have did so far was change its orientation, drag the handle from the original tool into this accessory. And now I need to add this waist attachment into the accessory, and then we should be good. So what I could do is I could just copy this, go over here, paste it into the handle, and then I'm pretty sure if I just line it up with the original one, then we should be good to go. So now I've lined it up with the original one. So now I could go ahead and give this a test. So I'll duplicate it, drag into my character, and almost, it's almost good. I just need to adjust its rotation a little bit. So I've now rotated it so that the orange arrow is facing up. And now once I duplicate this and drag it into the character, Yep, it ends up in the exact same spot right there. So that's perfect. From here, now that we have two accessories and two different tools, we can start writing the scripts. In the first part of the video, we added in some tools and created accessory versions of it, which the character will wear. So before we start writing the script, we need to organize this properly. So you can add as many more after this tutorial as you would like. In order to do this, we can click the plus button next to the server storage and add a folder inside. I'm going to rename this folder to be called items. And inside of this folder, I'm going to add two more folders. One of them is going to be called accessories, which will have all of the accessories. And the other one is going to be called tools, which will have all of the functioning tools. From here, we can then move any of the tools we have into the tools folder and any of the accessories that we have into the accessories folder. Please only add items into these folders if you have created an accessory version of it and have followed the steps as outlined in the first part of the video. Because let's say you add in a tool here that doesn't have its own accessory for it, then it's just going to take up space and make it a bit disorganized. Additionally, let's make sure that these tools function properly before we start writing the scripts. So I'm going to copy these and paste them into the starter pack 
and then I'm going to hit play through the home tab at the top left of the screen. And since both of these gears were created by Roblox, they should work fine. So yep, the sword works fine, and the hyper laser gun also works perfectly. So now we can click stop at the top, remove them from the starter pack, and we can continue. What we could do from here is click the plus button next to the server script service, and add a folder inside. I am going to rename this folder to be called holster system, and inside of this folder I'm going to add in a script, and I'm also going to add in a module script. We're going to be using a module script so that it's much easier to access the system and let's say holster it from any other script that you would like, just in case you need it for any other purpose. What I'm going to do from here is rename the module script to be called holstering system, and then I'm going to rename the script above it to be called whatever else I would like. Respawn handler or something. I don't know, it doesn't really matter what you name this one. Just make sure that you have named the module script holstering system. And now from here, make sure that you have adjusted the size of the text in the script editor to your preference, so you can hold control if you're on Windows or Command if you're on Mac, and scroll up or down. And once you have it at your preference, we can get rid of the text inside of the main script, and we'll get started with this one first. So at the very top of the script, we are going to create a few different variables. And this will make it much easier to reference different things in our game, including the holstering system module script, along with the items in the server storage. But the first one I'm going to reference is the player service. So in order to do this, I'm going to say local players is equal to game colon get service. And inside of the parentheses, I'm going to add in quotation marks and type in players. We will be utilizing this so that we can check whenever a player joins the game, which will then be activated to a function later on. Right after this, I'm going to follow the same idea, but instead reference the server storage, which we will be using to access the items folder on the next line. So I could say local items is equal to looking through the server storage for something that is called items. Take note that if the name of the folder is different, or if it's in a different place in your game, that you will need to adjust this line of code to match accordingly. And additionally, you can have the variables on the left side be whatever you would like, but if you ever reference it later on, make sure that it matches up properly. So if you rename this to be called like storage, that means that this one would also need to be changed to say storage as well. So I'm gonna undo that, and now we can continue by referencing the module script. And then these will be all the variables that we need at the top of this server script. So here I'm going to say local holster system, or I guess holstering system just so we don't get it confused. And I'm going to make it equal to require, and inside of the parentheses, I'm going to say script.parent.holstering system. What we are doing here when we are requiring the module script is we are basically getting whatever table it returns. And this is something I'll explain more once we start writing the module script. But as we could see in here, inside of the script, it is returning the module. So when we are requiring the module script, we're going to get whatever is inside of this table. And this is going to be really important so we have access to the list of tools in addition to all the other functions that we'll be using in order to activate the holstering system. And additionally, when we are saying script.parent, we are referring to whatever is containing this respawn handler script. So script.parent is going to be the holster system folder. And if that's a bit confusing for you, you can always click on the item, go into its properties, and check what its parent property is. And once we've done that, we can then reference the holstering system, which is inside of the folder. Actually, I'm gonna rename this module script to be called holstering module, just so we don't get it confused in the future. And I'm going to rename this one right here to be holstering module. Now that we have all this out of the way, sorry if I was going a bit too fast, we're going to take our time now with the rest of the functions in here. So inside of this script, we are not in the module script right now, we're in the respawn handler. I'm going to create a function that is called item holstering. Holstering, and then I'm going to add the parentheses at the end, and then I'm going to hit enter. And this end is going to allow the function to know whenever it needs to stop. So once the code inside of here has run, it'll see this and know that it's done. But before we start writing code inside of here, we need a way to activate this function. So right below it, I'm going to create some events. Actually, I'm only gonna need one event. So I'm gonna start by saying players, which we defined on line one of the script. And then I could say dot player added. So whenever a player is added into the game or whenever someone joins, we can connect it to a function. And in this case, we want to connect it to the item holstering function. 
And now because we are activating this function from an event, there's some data passed through into the function. In this case, since it's being activated whenever someone joins, we'll be able to figure out who joined the game. So inside of the parentheses here, we can add in a parameter. So now we can use this word, which in this case is player, to reference whoever joins the game. And since we'll also be testing this in Roblox Studio, just in case this event doesn't get run, I'm going to create a loop, which we'll start by saying for underscore comma player in pairs. And inside of the parentheses, I'm going to be saying players colon get players. <laughs> and I'm going to add these parentheses at the end of it. And I'm going to type in do. And I'm just going to brush over this right now. I'll explain more about loops once we get to the item whole string function here and the module script. So don't worry if this is a bit confusing for you right now. But from here inside of this loop, I can now say coroutine.wrap. And I'm going to put the name of the function that we have right here. And afterward, inside of the parentheses, I'm also going to reference any of the players currently in the game. So we send that through into the item holstering function. And this will basically just be here as a safeguard in case this function is not activated for you once you start playing the game inside of Roblox Studio. So now that we have a way to activate this function, we can continue on. The first thing we can do now that we have a reference to any player that joins the game is see whenever they respawn. In order to do that, I'm going to reference the player and I'm going to listen for whenever a character is added into the game. So basically, whenever they respawn. Whenever that happens, I want to connect it to a brand new function. And once again, because this is activated through an event, we are able to reference some data that is passed through, which in this case will be the player's character. And we're adding this function into here just so that we have a brand new reference to the character each time they respawn, which will ensure that the holstering system doesn't break over time. And inside of here, the first thing I'm actually going to do is listen for whenever the character is removed from the game so that we can make sure that the character ends up being destroyed. In this place, I'll just put char and I'll say char colon destroy. And this will just ensure that any of the existing references to the character are disconnected so that we don't end up having any memory leaks later on. Now, sorry if I've brushed over some of these as well, but this isn't the main part of this entire system. And since I expect this to be a long video, I'm kind of going quick over some of these aspects. All right, and now that we have gotten that out of the way, we can get to more of the interesting part. And this is going to be how we can detect whenever a player equips or unequips a tool and how we can give them the accessory and have it show up on their character once that happens. So we're gonna create a few placeholder functions right here, and then we're gonna start working on the holstering module. So right here, I'm going to start by referencing the backpack. So I'm gonna say local backpack is equal to player colon wait for a child. And inside of the parentheses, I'm going to add in backpack with a capital B. The reason I'm adding this inside of the character add function is because the backpack is destroyed. It's basically kind of reset every time the player respawns. So we want to make sure that we have an updated reference to this. Afterwards, let's create a few functions. The first of which is going to be responsible for whenever a new item gets added into the character. So I could reference the character and I could say dot child added, and then I can connect this to a brand new function. And this will detect, or this will be activated, whenever an item is added onto the first layer of a player's character. So anything that you could see directly when you open up the character model, this is on the first layer of the character. If I add something, let's say, inside of one of these hats right here, this is no longer considered a child of the character. It's considered a descendant of the character. You can almost imagine this like a family tree. You know, you could say that all of these items are a child of this right up here, but then some of these items have children of their own, which would be considered descendants of the original one. So once again, because we are activating this from an event, we are able to reference some data inside the function. In this case, it'll be the new item that was added. So here, I'm just going to say new item. And then we'll add some more code into this later once we've started working on the module. Right below it, we are going to create some more. But in this case, it's going to be whenever something is removed from the character or the backpack. So in this case, I'm going to create a universal function for this, and I'm just going to call it item removed. And this is going to be activated whenever a child is removed from the character. So we're going to connect it to the function that is called item removed. Or actually, we're going to connect this to a brand new function for a reason I'll explain in a moment. 
and we are also going to reference the backpack and listen for whenever a child is removed and connect that to another function. So I'm going to move these down here, and now I'll explain why this is the case. The reason we're connecting both of these to the item removed function is so that it's much more easier and streamlined when checking if something happened. So instead of typing in a lot of code inside of here and then basically copy pasting it for the other one and checking for something else, we can just send it to a singular function and have it all done in here. So inside of here, I need to make sure that we reference the items that were removed from the character or the backpack. So here I'm going to say old item. I'm gonna do the same with this one. And then I'm gonna activate the function that is called item removed, but I'm gonna send two arguments through or two pieces of data. The first one is going to be the container that the item was removed from. So in this case, it's going to be the character and then I'll send through the old item. Or actually, let's do it the other way around. Let's send through the old item and then the container it came from. Similarly, for the other function, I'm going to say item removed. I'll send through the old item that left the backpack, and then I'll send through the backpack. So now, inside of the parentheses of this function up at the top, we need to make sure we are able to reference both of these objects. So the first one, I am just going to call it old item, and the second one, I'm going to call it container, because it could either reference the character that is sent through or the backpack. So then this function we will also add to later once we have gotten started on the module over here. And now that we have this, I think we could just add some spaces here just so we could keep it more spaced out and so that we know what goes where. And now we could go on over to the holstering module script and we can get started with this one. And if you're wondering why we're using module scripts, this will basically allow us to have reusable code that we can activate for multiple different scripts and it'll make it much, much easier if we ever need to make a change. So instead of having to go through this script and changing all that we need to do here, and then let's say opening up another script and doing that there, we could just adjust the module, and then we would need to make minimal or no changes to the other scripts that reference this module. And just in case I don't explain modules really well during this part of the video, I'll also include some references and resources about it in the important link section of the description. And now that we have this out of the way, I'm actually going to remove all these lines of code for here right now and start from scratch. So the first thing we're going to do is reference the items folder in the server storage. So I can actually go and take that reference from over here just so we don't have to type as much. And now we can continue. Right below this, I'm going to create a table that will contain a list of all of the tools inside of the items folder over here. And now this is a list of items that we are going to be able to update whenever certain things happen, like whenever the game starts up, or let's say you add more tools to this folder during runtime, then that can be included there as well. So what I'm going to do right below this is create a brand new function that is called update item list. And this is going to be activated a couple of different times, or maybe just two times, but the first time will be as soon as this script is required for the first time. So we're just going to activate it right away by saying the name of the function and adding the parentheses at the end. And the other time we are going to activate it is whenever a new item is added into the tools folder. In order to do that, I am going to reference that folder. So I'll say items.tools.childadded. So whenever a new item is added directly into the tools folder, we can connect that to a function. We're going to reference the new item that was added into that folder. And then we're going to call the update item list. Oh, sorry, right before that, actually, we're going to make sure that item added in there is in fact a tool so that we're only updating the tool list for that kind of item. And then if that is the case, we can update the item list, sending that new item inside. So now that we have a way to activate the function from here, we can start writing the code inside. So just in case we happen to send an item through, we're gonna make sure we have a parameter here that will check for that. So I'm gonna say new item just to reference that. And the first thing I'm gonna do inside of this function is reference the tools folder. So I'm gonna say local tools folder is equal to items colon find first child. And inside of there, I'm gonna add in parentheses and type in tools. And maybe I should have done that here for this one as well. But since the tools folder is not created during runtime and it's also in the server storage, it should be there before this module script even has a chance to run. But just in case, since this function is going to be activated first, I'm gonna say, if the tools folder happens to exist, then we can continue on. 
Now that we've made sure that folder exists inside of the items folder, we can then check if a new item was sent through into this function from the child added event. So what I could check over here is I could say if new item, so if a, something was sent through for this parameter, and we're not able to find that item inside the table, so we're going to say table.find, and inside the parentheses we're going to pass through two values. The first one is going to be the name of the table that we're looking through. In this case, we want to look through the table that is called tool list. So we could say tool list, and I can add a comma, and now I can check through to see if the name of the new item is there. So if this is not the case, so we're saying not table.find, so if this statement right here, if this condition is false, then we want to make sure we add that into the tool list. So what I could say is table.insert, then once again, I'm gonna say the name of the table, and then I'm gonna add in the value right next to it that I want to be added into the table. And in this case, I'll add in the name of that item. But now let's say that this function was not activated sending any new item through. Then what we could do is add an alternative condition, or in this case, we could just say else. So if anything else happens, if this condition was not met in its entirety, then we could perform some other actions instead. And in this case, what we wanna do is loop through the tools folder and add in the name of every item inside. So I could say for underscore, comma, tool in I pairs, and I'm gonna put the table that we want to look through here, which in this case will be the tools folder. And then I'm gonna say colon get children and add the parentheses at the end. Now is when I can explain loops, just in case you don't know how they work already. So when we're looping through something, we have to be given a table. And a table is basically a list of items or words or numbers that we are able to look through with loops. When we do this, we can reference two different values. In this case, it'll either be the position in the loop that we're in, which I just set to an underscore since we won't be using that, along with the value, or in this case, the actual item that's there. So typically you might see most people write this as i comma v in pairs, and that tends to refer to index comma value, and the index will basically be the position of the loop you're on. So if we're looping through the tools folder, the classic sword could be in position one, and that would be what show up if we referenced i. However, if we did something with v, or whatever is on the right side of the comma, that is going to reference the actual value. So in this case, it'll talk about the actual classic sword. So if I wanted to say something like print, and actually I'll just make this a little bit more descriptive just for an example. So if I were to print the index, sorry, if I were to print the index and the value, what it would do is it would print one, and then it would print whatever the value in the table is. So right here, it could print one, and then it'll print classic sword right next to it. And the next time it loops through the table, it'll print two, and then it'll print hyper laser gun. And again, if this is also a little bit confusing, I can provide some resources in the important link section of the description to help out that because I, 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 can't, I can't explain all of these every single time here, just so that we're able to get through this tutorial. And there's also a difference between using in pairs and in i pairs, and that is the difference between an array and a dictionary, which I won't get into right now. Again, more resources about that in the important link section of the description. So now that we are looping through this table, we are able to reference every single tool inside. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is check if there already isn't a listing inside of the table for this. So if we don't find the name of the item inside of the tool list folder, we can add it to the table. So we're referencing the tool, which is right here, the name of the tool. So if we don't find the name of that tool inside of the tool list table, then we can go ahead and do the same thing as earlier. Table.insert, we'll add it to the tool list so that we are able to know all of the different items that can be holstered. And sorry if this is still seems like a messy tutorial, because I don't think I explained this part right here, what Get Children does. But basically what this will do is it will create a table of that item we're referencing. So in this case, it is referencing the tools folder. When we call Get Children on it, it'll turn it into a table that we can loop through. And if I already said this, I guess there's that information for you once more. And now I think we're done with the item or the update item list function. So now that we have this out of the way over here, we can continue on below all of this and finally get started on more of the interesting parts of this system. 
So right down here, I'm going to create a brand new table that will be called holster system. And this is going to be the table that we are actually returning from this module. And this is because we are going to create some functions that will go into this table. And the first of which is going to be a relatively quick function. And in order to add it to this table, I'm going to say function, and then I'll type in the name of the table, which in this case is holster system. And then I'm going to add a dot after it. And now I can type in the name of the function. So in this case, I'm going to call it get tool list. So now once this module script is required, there will be a function inside of this table that is called get tool list. And the reason we're going to use this here, or the, the reason we're going to have this here is so that we can return the table that has all of the items inside of the tool list. And this will be useful so that we don't have to loop through the folder every single time. We want to check if one of the items that the player equips or unequips is something from that tool list. So I'm going to return the table that is called tool list. So now if we ever activate this function from another script, we'll have immediate access to that table. And if you have a keen eye, you might have noticed that we aren't saying local function when it comes to this one, even though we utilize that for this function over here and even the majority or all of them inside of the respawn handler. And this is because of the environment that the function will be able to be accessed from. So because we're storing it inside of this table that is then going to be accessed from other scripts, we must keep it in the global environment. And if I've butchered this explanation and you know more than I do, then please correct me in the comment section. And if I have also explained this poorly, I will make a note of it on the screen and I'll also provide some resources in the description that correct me. So for all of these functions down below that we will be storing inside of the holster system table, we are just going to be saying function and not local function. So after here, we can now create the main one that we'll be using throughout the entirety of this video. And this is going to be the one that actually holsters the item. So I'm going to create a function that is a part of the holster system table, and I'm just going to call this one holster. And we're going to complete this function before even doing anything else within the respawn handler, because once again, this is the most important part. When this function is activated, there are up to four different values that we might be sending through. And the first of which is going to be the accessory that will either need to be holstered, unholstered, or given to the character. Alongside this, we are going to have a transparency value get sent through, which will be a number. And this is going to be what is responsible for achieving the holstering effect, because all we're really doing is we are setting the transparency value of all of the items, or base parts more specifically, inside of these accessories to either be equal to 1 if we want it to be invisible, or we're going to make it equal to 0 if we want it to be seen. So for most use cases, we're only going to be need to be referencing these two items right here, or these two parameters. But just in case, we're going to have two more. The third of which is going to be if we want to add an accessory to the character. So this is going to be a true or false bool value, or I guess we're, we're only going to be sending true if we need it. And if this sends in true, then we're also going to add that accessory to the character. But in order to do that, we need a fourth parameter, which will reference the humanoid of the character. And this is because the humanoid has a method, which is add accessory. And this allows us to add the accessory to the character like so. So if this was still a little bit confusing, don't worry, because we're creating this function before we even write anything related to it over here. So once we end up referencing the holstering module over in the respawn handler script, it should make a bit more sense. But now we're going to start writing in this function. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure that all of the correct values were sent through. Because once again, this could be activated from any other server script that you end up having just in case you want to reference it from somewhere else other than the respawn handler. So the first thing I'm going to check is the accessory. So I'm going to say local accessory check. And I'm going to make it equal to type of, and inside of here, I'm going to type in accessory. And what this will do is it'll return the type of whatever was sent through. In this case, we want to make sure that it is an instance. And an instance is basically an object or an item. It's going to be, you know, it could be an accessory. It could be a tool. It could be a folder. It could be my character model. We're going to make sure that it's an instance and not anything else like a number or a table. And in addition to this, we also want to make sure that it is in fact an accessory 
So we'll say and accessory is a accessory. And by making sure that these two conditions are correct when this function is activated, it'll ensure that this should not break if you accidentally send something else through that is not an accessory. And again, I'll also provide some resources for this in the important link section of the description because this is not talked about often, and it's still something that I have not used very often. Or actually, I've not used this at all in any of my other tutorials so far. We're gonna follow the same process with all of the other parameters just to make sure that the correct values were sent through. So for the transparency value, we're gonna make sure that its type happens to be a number. Or sorry, we're gonna type in transparency here, and we're gonna make sure that it's equal to number in parentheses right there. In addition to this, we want to make sure that the value is between zero and one, because those are the minimum and maximum values of the transparency property. So I'll say and transparency must be greater than or equal to zero, and it also must be less than or equal to one. So from here, we can now continue and check if both of these conditions were met. So if accessory check and I didn't say transparency check, but now I have and transparency check, then we can continue here and do what we need to do, which in this case will be looping through the accessory and changing its transparency. So what we're gonna do is create a loop so we're going to say for underscore comma item in i pairs, and we'll say accessory colon get descendant. So this is going to get everything, not just on the first layer of the accessory, but everything else. So if I were to open this accessory up, it would get everything inside of the handle and everything else in here as well. And this is going to be done just to check for anything that has a transparency property. So if an item that was found is a base part, which all of the base parts will have an accessory property, then we're going to set the item's transparency value, the number that was sent through into the function. And this will make it so we don't have to have a separate thing that checks like, oh, you know, if the accessory of the item, or sorry, if the transparency of the item is zero, then we'll just swap it to one. Now we're just going to set it to whatever value was sent through from the function. So just as a quick recap here, just in case I went through this a bit too quick, we're going to be checking if the accessory and transparency that were sent through were of the correct type. And if that's the case, then we're gonna loop through the accessory that was sent through into this function, find every item inside that is a base part. And once we've done that, we can set its transparency to one or zero. And that's going to end off this part right here because adding it to the character model if we need to will be something completely separate. We don't need to have that inside of this if then statement. So right down below here, we're going to do some of the same things that we did right at the top of the function. So I'm going to start by saying add to character check is equal to checking what its type is. So type of add to character. And we're gonna make sure that this is equal to a Boolean, which once again, in our case will be true or false. And we're also gonna make sure that it's equal to true. So I'm just gonna say add to character. So we don't need to say is equal to true just because the value that gets sent through will either be true or false. And then right below this, we're gonna do a similar thing except with the humanoid. So I'm gonna copy the line up here that's for the accessory check. Instead, I'm just gonna say humanoid check type of for the humanoid. We're gonna make sure that it is an instance and we're gonna make sure that the humanoid is a humanoid. So now right below this, we can check for these things to be true, but additionally, we'll also need to make sure that the accessory was sent through because this is in a completely different if then statement. So the first thing we're gonna do here is check if the accessory was sent through and if the add to character check happened to be a Boolean and it happened to be true as well. So we'll just paste this right here. And in addition to this, we're also going to make sure that the humanoid check also was good. So let's say humanoid check. And then right down below here, we can add the accessory to the character. So I can then reference the humanoid that we sent through into this function and call add accessory onto it. And then I can apply the accessory that we sent through into the function as well. And if I went through this a little bit too fast as well, then basically, once again, we are checking if the accessory is an instance 
and it is an accessory or whatever value was sent through here. And then we're doing the same sort of checks for the add to character and humanoid parameter. We're making sure that they're the correct kind of values. And if all of those happen to be true, then we know we're safe to add the accessory to the player's character. And the reason I organize this like this, I organize these this if then statement on multiple lines is just so it doesn't end up being a super long line that has all of these different checks. I could just keep it a little bit more organized. And this is also the preferred way of doing it according to Roblox's Lua coding style GitHub page, which I'll also have in the important link section of the description. And now that we've completed this holster function, we're going to return the table that contains both of these functions right here. So ooh, there's, oh man, there's a lot going on here, but we can get back to this later. So now once we require this module from any other scripts, it's going to return the holster system table. So now we will have access to both the get tool list function in addition to the holster function. So now that we have this set up, we can go on over to the respawn handler and continue writing all the code that we need to over here. So in order to start this, as a quick recap, I'm actually gonna remind you of how all of these different functions were activated. So the character child added function will be activated whenever a new item is added onto the first layer of the character. And that's how we have a reference for that new item that was added. Similarly, for the item removed function, we are checking when a child is removed from the character or the backpack. And once that happens, we'll be activating the function called item removed, sending through the old item and whatever container that item had left from. So if it left the character or if it left the backpack. And now that we have that quick recap out of the way, we can start with this function over here. And the first thing we're gonna do is check what this new item that was added into the character is. Because we wanna make sure that it's a tool. Because if it isn't a tool, then we don't wanna to have to activate all these functions and accidentally try to holster something completely different. So if that new item is a tool, then we can continue. Next, we're gonna check if an accessory is already in the character. Because if that's the case, then we can already holster it much quicker. So I could say local accessory check is equal to looking through the character and seeing if we can find something that has the name of the new item with the word accessory attached to the end of it. So here we are utilizing concatenation to basically fill in this data. Whatever the name of this new item is will be filled in right here and attached to the end of it will be the word accessory. And this will allow us for it to be much more dynamic and easier to fill in the data. So right below it, the first thing I can now write is if not accessory check. So we're gonna find a way to handle it if it doesn't find an accessory that has the exact same name as the item with the word accessory attached to the end of it. So if that is not the case, then we are going to access the module. So I'm going to say local tool list is equal to holstering system dot get tool list. And once again, the holstering system is what we made a reference for it at the top of the script over here on line six, we required the module. And then the dot get tool list is referencing the function that we created right here. So this function is part of the holster system table that is returned at the bottom of the module script. So because this returns the list of tools, we can then look through that table for a specific item. So right below this, I can now see if we have a tool list, if it was able to return something, then I'm gonna create a brand new variable inside of here, which will be called local table check. And I'm gonna make this equal through, I'm gonna make this equal to looking through the table, which is called tool list. And I'm gonna see if we can find the name of that new item inside of there. And right below this, I'm also gonna make sure that we do have an accessories folder inside of the server storage, which is inside of the items folder. So I could say local accessories is equal to items, colon find first child accessories. Now right below this, I can then say if table check and accessories. So if both of these happen to exist, then we can continue on. And the reason we're doing this is to ensure that the item or the tool that has been added into the character exists inside the tool list and that it has a respective accessory for it inside of the other folder. Because we don't want to activate the holstering function inside of the module script right over here if we don't have an accessory to send through. 
So what I can then do inside of here is check for that accessory to exist. So local accessory is equal to looking through the accessories folder and finding an item that once again has the same name as the new item with the word accessory attached to the end of it. And in addition to this, we're gonna also make sure that the humanoid of the character exists because this is something that we will need to send through into the function. Because once again, this part of the function is only going to go through if the character does not have the accessory that is supposed to go on their character. So local humanoid is equal to looking through the character or something that is called humanoid, or sorry, we'll do wait for child just in case it doesn't exist yet. So wait for a child, whoops, wait for a child. So if both of these conditions are also true, so if the accessory exists in the folder and the character's humanoid also exists, then I'm going to create a cloned version of the accessory. So I could say local clone, cloned accessory is equal to accessory colon clone. And the reason we're cloning this is so that it doesn't end up leaving the server storage because if we give, if we give the only version of that accessory to the character, then that means the next time someone needs it, they're not gonna be able to have it. So we need to make sure that we create a duplicate version of it. So now that we've gotten to this point, we can now activate the holstering system. So I could say holstering system dot holster. And the first thing I'm gonna send through is the cloned accessory. Afterward, I'm gonna send through the transparency value that I want it to be set to, which in this case will be one. Afterward, since I want it to be added to the character, I'm gonna say true. And then finally, I'm going to send through the humanoid. So if we take this as a reference right here, remember we're sending an accessory through the transparency, if we want it to be added to the character and the humanoid. If we go over to the holstering module, you'll see we have all four of those referenced right here. So instead of needing to type this up every single time we wanted to equip it to the character inside of these other scripts, we can just activate the function and send whatever we need through it. And now we're almost done with this function right here, but I'm actually gonna add an else if statement. So let's just say the accessory check does exist. Maybe I could have even added that up here. So if accessory check, and I'll change this to the else if statement instead. So if the accessory check exists, then what we could do is just go right from the get-go and say holstering system dot holster. Then we'll send through the accessory check and the value we want it to be set to which in this case, we just want it to be set to completely transparent. And we don't need to add any more values into here because it already exists in the character. And that also means we don't need to send the humanoid through. So whenever an item is added into the player's character, if it happens to be a tool and they have an item inside of their character that has the exact same name as the item with the word accessory attached to the end of it, then we're gonna holster it. But if that is not the case, then we're gonna look through the module script and see if we can get the table that contains a list of all of the tools that can be holstered. If that tool list exists and it happens to find the name of that item inside of the table along with an accessories folder in the items folder, then we're gonna look through to see if it finds an accessory with this name. If that happens to be the case and the character has a humanoid, then we'll create a clone of that accessory and activate the holstering system, sending all of that data through. And now that we have this function completed, we are almost done with the script. We just need to update or add the code that we need to to the item removed function, and then we should be good to go. So outside of this, we have now completed the character.child added function. So now we'll follow a similar principle inside of here and then we're good to go. We're gonna start off by doing a similar thing, checking whatever the old item is. So we're gonna make sure that this is a tool so that we don't have to go through all the hassle of activating functions if it's not something that can be holstered. So if old item is a tool, then we know that we're on the right track. Afterward, we can then create another accessory check and this is going to do the exact same thing as we did earlier. We're gonna look through the character see if we can find something with the exact same name of the item and then with the word accessory attached to the end of it. So I'm going to see if the accessory check has been found, if it's already there, and the container, or I guess, hmm, I'm gonna change this to be old container instead because this is the container that the item was removed from. So in this case, let's say an item was removed from the character 
it's no longer going to be in the character. So we'll just make that change right there. So if accessory checks, so if it finds that accessory in the character and the old container happened to be equal to the backpack, then we're going to do something for that. From here, we now need to check where the tool went because if the accessory that's supposed to be holstered on the character is still there, but the tool was completely removed from the player's backpack, let's say they dropped it on the ground, we don't want them to have it on their back still or wherever else it might be. So we can then see if that old item is no longer inside of the character, so if its parent is not equal to the character, then we're going to add a warn in here, and this is just gonna be for troubleshooting purposes, we can always remove it later, that will say old item.name, and we're gonna say that it has left the backpack and Let's just say it's not in the character. It's not in the character. It is being destroyed. So what we are then going to do right after this part is destroy the accessory check. So accessory check, colon destroy. However, we also need to check if the old container was the character. So we'll add an alternative condition here. So let's say the accessory check was also, or the accessory was found and the old container happened to be the character instead, then we can check for something else. If that old item, which in, case, which in this case is a tool, is not in the backpack, then we could do something else. Or actually, we'll, you know, we're pretty much going to do the exact same thing. So we could say the old item has left the character and it's not in the backpack, so we are going to destroy it as well. So, oh, sorry. Instead of, uh, instead of saying it is being destroyed, we'll say the accessory is being destroyed because the item is no longer there. And sorry if I'm going over this really quick, I'll explain why are we doing this. And I might have already done it when we were creating this lines of code, when we were creating these lines of code right over here. But I will just reiterate just to make sure we're on the same page. So basically we are checking to see if the tool that the player has or that the player had is no longer in their character or backpack. Because if the player doesn't have that tool anymore, we want to make sure that the accessory associated with it is removed from their character. Because let's say someone happens to drop the tool on the ground. So you know, it would have left their character and it is no longer in their backpack. We don't want the accessory to show up on the character anymore because it wouldn't make sense. You know, you have the tool version of it, that's on the ground. So why would they still have the accessory on their back? So this is basically what we're checking for inside of this function to make sure it's removed from the character when it needs to be. And actually, I forgot to add one more thing right here. And this is actually going to check if the tool went into the backpack. So I can add right here, else if old item dot parent does happen to be equal to the player's backpack, then we can reference the holstering system and holster that item. So we could say accessory check, and we'll say zero because we want the accessory to be visible. So ooh, I think I think now we have completed everything. Whoops, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this loop over here above the player added function just in case. And now I think that we have written everything that we need to. And yeah, so now we can go over here and give this a test to see if it ends up working. Uh, make sure that you have either placed the tools into the workspace or let's just say you've put it into the starter pack because as of right now, we have not written anything that will give you the tools on its own. So as an example, I'm going to start by placing these two tools into the workspace right here so we could pick it up and then we can hit play at the top and test this out. So let's say right here, I'm going to open up the workspace and open up my character just to show you. I do not have the tool in my character and I don't have the accessory either. Now I'm going to step on this tool over here. As we can see, the accessory is now added into my character. And if I unequip this, we'll see that it has been added to my character's back. So now if I equip it again, it disappears. And then I'll keep doing that over and over again. And let's say I drop it. As you can see, the accessory version of it has been destroyed because the sword is no longer in the character. If I pick it up again, the accessory comes back. As we can see, it shows up again. Let's say I pick up the hyper laser gun over here. The hyper laser gun accessory appears. And now it's right there at my leg. If I drop this one, then it's going to do that. And I can't actually drop this tool because that property has been disabled. 
And now just because I didn't show this working with a tool that has multiple parts, I'll just demonstrate that really quickly. So let's say, let me go get this accessory from the server storage and let's paste it over here. And let's just weld another item to it. So let me just, actually on, instead of duplicating it, let me just drag it on over here. And let's just weld another part to it. So I'm gonna add in a part into this right here. I'm gonna drag it on over. And let's just add it right there. Yeah, sure, well, we'll do that. And now what I'm going to do is select the handle, click the plus button next to it, and I'm going to add a weld constraint inside. I'm going to click on weld constraint. I'm going to set part zero to be the handle and part one to be the other part that we added. And now I think this should work fine. I'm going to make sure that this is set to can collide false just in case. And now I'm going to move this back into the accessories folder and we'll just test it out really quick. So now when I go over here and pick this up, as we can see, the, the part that was uh, welded to it now shows up. So if I open up the workspace and let's open up my character and the accessory, you'll see that it has both of those parts there and both become invisible once I get rid of it. And just as one more test, let's move these tools into the starter pack and hit play. So now I believe the first time I spawn in, it's not going to have the accessories appear. Or actually, no, it did. Oh yeah, oh yeah, but right when I spawn, as you can see, I don't have the hyper laser gun on the side of my character. But once I equip it and unequip it, it shows up perfectly fine. So yes, that shows you, you can place it directly into the starter pack. You don't have to worry about giving the accessories or tools in any other way, and you will be able to holster it. Whew, this was a long video, and since you've made it this far, post a comment down below to suggest what tutorial I should create next, along with any feedback about what I could do better to make these tutorials more enjoyable and easier for you to learn from. Remember to like the video if this helped, along with checking out my Roblox Studio tutorial series that will have dozens of other useful videos through the card at the top right of the screen or via the playlist in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching this tutorial. Hope that you guys have a great rest of your day or night or whatever time it is there for you. And I hope to see you next time. So bye bye.